Hi, I'm Jim Gordon. I'm Lita Leapins, and welcome to another edition of Our City Tonight. Well, Lita, here we are at one of our favorite places in Vancouver. It's Distillery Bar and Kitchen. I love this place in Yale Town because they play great jazz and big band music, and they play great classic movies on the TV screens, and they have a fireplace. Well, while Jim's waxing on about how much he loves this place, <laughs> I think we should get to Our City Tonight. This segment of Spirits Up is brought to you by Evolve Cellars and Time Winery. Cheers. Well, Lita and I find ourselves at Coast Restaurant by the Global Group in downtown Vancouver for this edition of the Spirits Up Wine segment with our dear friend, Crystal Lee. And Crystal Lee, I know Coast definitely um, predominantly serves seafood. They've got a lot of different things. But seafood goes really well with bubble, and we, of course, <laughs> love bubble. What a shock. <laughs> That's surprisingly, yes. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about bubble, since we have been drinking a lot of sparkling sure, wine? Sure, we're generally talking about what we're drinking instead of how it's made. Yeah. So there's three different ways that sparkling wine can be made. You've got the traditional method that's fermented in the bottle. The secondary fermentation happens in this bottle. It then uh, breaks down. You get more of a yeast autolysis, a little more bread doughy characteristic to it. Then you've got what's called the coupe close method or the charmat method. And that's how we make our effervescence from Evolve. Okay. So this okay. primary fermentation occurs and then the secondary fermentation actually occurs in a pressurized tank. Okay. So if you think of the tank as a giant champagne bottle and then it's filtered and bottled under pressure. So it's got the, a really nice fine mousse fine bubble to it, like a traditional, but it doesn't have that bread doughy, and if you taste this, you'll notice it's got a little more pear and apple, a little more orchard fruit to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's a third method, so this is how Prosecco is made as well. So Oh, that's, that's why I, I like it so much. Exactly. <laughs> and then the third method is uh, what we call injection or frizzante, mm -hmm. and that's basically taking a still wine and injecting it with CO2. So that sparkling wine, the bubble's a little bit bigger, and it's oh. more like soda pop, right? So those are the three different types Very of nice. Sparkling, and so. we, sh we should ask too, with something like this, we know you love bubbles, yeah. uh, oysters, we're here at Coast. Uh, these Coast. are my two favorite things, bubbles and oysters. <laughs> I thought right? I was so, one of your favorite oh, things. Oh, you are, and you too, exactly. <laughs> nice right? try, she told so, me I'm yeah. ninth on her list. Actually. Okay, <laughs> we're going to come back later in the show to Coast Restaurant and talk more wine with Crystal Lee. Well, he is a local actor, but to say he's local means he's only working local, and this guy ain't. <laughs> he's doing international films in the States up here, TV up here, down there, and uh, our city tonight is honored to have Alex Panovac here. Uh, and I gotta tell you, buddy, you are in a movie that Lita and I agree is gonna be a top 10 for both of us here this year in 2017, and that is War of the Planet of the Apes. Can you talk about playing Winter? Mm -hmm. And we talked to Karen Conoval earlier, who played Maurice. Right. Talk about the the the, the procedures you went through as an actor for this kind of different kind of acting. It is a different kind of acting, and the coolest thing about it is that you know I went through a five audition process, and and as it kept on breaking down, and you know you're getting close, and you know there there was movement that we had to do, and obviously the acting of, of portraying what the the message was in the scenes. And when, when I finally got the gig, obviously I was over the moon, and then we were told we're gonna be doing about a month, month and a half of Ape Camp. A Ape Camp. Which yeah. was which was so fun. Which is needed. It which def is needed. definitely yeah, needed, absolutely. but think about that. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm going to work um, to Ape Camp, Ape you know? Camp. And uh, so for me, it was great because we got to really understand the movement. Terry Norty was phenomenal as, at, at coaching us through the whole project. And and um, so you're going to Ape Camp, you're, you're a part of this whole essence of a, of a of an energy, convey, conveying an energy within the role. Yeah. And, uh, and the graduation was Andy Circus taking us into a park where people are walking their dogs and we had to stay in character for three hours. We couldn't break character. Oh, wow. And it was the coolest thing because we had this one, we had this one thing happen where we're, 
uh, by a stream. Karen's over there. Everyone's just being in their spot. Everyone's getting up and moving. Um, Andy Circus is getting up and moving, but no one knew when it was over. And then Andy, the way Andy got up and just started, took two steps, everyone just got up and started walking. And all of a sudden we were leaving. It was, I was, that's when I broke character. I was like, we're leaving. Like, I mean, he totally did that through energy. It was so cool. Nice. It was, it was definitely a highlight. Even the, even the preparation going into it. And then the filming, next level. Cool. Look at your eyes. Almost human. How did you know I was here? I was told you were coming. There's a look at War of the Planet of the Apes, available now on DVD. And I'll tell you, for Lee and I, uh, one of our top movies of the year, we're here with one of the actors from that, and so many other things. Got to ask you about some other work you're doing. First, congratulations, Lee and I were at the uh, Whistler Film Fest launch, right. where you picked up the Igniter Award. That's right. Can yeah. you explain that? Well, it, it, I mean, it was an honor having them come to me and ask me if I wanted to accept this award. And obviously, the Whistler Film Festival is dear to my heart. I think it's one of the best festivals out there, and it's homegrown, and I love it. And it's basically inspiring. Um, um, you know, filmmakers that go out there and, and positive attitudes and just kind of like getting up and doing your thing and getting the community involved and for them to think of me for that award is, is amazing. Cool, and we should mention as well, a movie that I loved last year, uh, Numb. Yeah. I love it when I can talk uh, glowingly about movies that were shot in this province. Right. And that was a well done movie. Look for that on DVD. Can you tell us quickly about some of the, uh, you're on two shows right now. Yeah. Can you yeah. talk quickly for viewers that may not know sure. that? Sure. I'm on uh, the second season of Van Helsing on Sci-Fi is just airing and it's been, a, it's been a blast because I've gotten to be able to, in the first season, play this really mean, um, the mean vampire that has a lot of <laughs> Oh, it's so great. great. Yeah, yeah. And then this season, I've, I've gotten to, I get bitten and now I've become human. And now I get to go on this journey of redemption. And it's it's been a great thing that Neil Butte and um, Jonathan Walker got to write for me. And Jackie Walker, May. Jonathan Walker, a good friend of ours. Oh, he's, got Neil Butte. That's, that's oh, good yeah. stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. and Jackie May wrote this episode in episode three where I really got to so, show some chops. And that was, that's was that been fun. And Dirk Gently on BBC America, I played a guy named Wygard Oak, which is basically an oak tree. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's been a blast. I mean, just working um, with so many great, talented actors in this in this province, and and being a part of a show that I really admire. Both shows, and, and I've just been having a blast. It's been great. Well, listen, congratulations. I didn't realize. Lita and I have known you a long time. I didn't realize until I actually had to look at my friend's bio that you were actually blown through Vancouver on your way to L.A. That's right. Before around 9/11. Around 9/11, and, and you settled here. Yeah. Glad you did. Yeah, keep thank keep you, doing the work you do. Thank you, sir. Shake my hand. You He's a big guy. He's breaking my fist. He's <laughs> my hand right now. Actually, I look for I, one of the top ten movies of the year, War of the Planet of the Apes, on DVD now. Well, we're back here at Coast Restaurant, downtown Vancouver, by the Global Group. And we're back here with Krista Lee, our favorite wine expert. Aww, thank you. <laughs> you know, I don't think we actually know many wine experts. So <laughs> yeah. I, no, no, by I, default. I, I kid, I kid because I love, you know that. I know. Uh, <laughs> okay, you know what, we're back here at Coast. It's all about, that's not the only thing they have on the menu, but it, they're known for the seafood here mm -hmm. in uh, mm -hmm. uh, the restaurant. But we're going to try something that also goes well with sushi. What are we going to try? Yeah, now? so what I brought today is our thyme Riesling. And just Normally when you think oysters, sushi, quite often you think more sparkling wine, maybe Chardonnay. We also, it goes amazingly well with our White Meritage, which is available here at the restaurant as well. Nice. But I thought Riesling, because what I like about this Riesling, well, what I like about Riesling, period, because there's very few that I don't like, is the diversity that you have with Riesling. You can have one similar to this one that's drier style. It's got this great minerality to it, a little limestone, uh, some flintiness to it right up to the spectrum where it's a little bit sweeter, it's a little bit rounder, fruitier, richer. So you can't just say, I don't like Riesling because it's such a diverse variety. So what I love about this style of Riesling with foods such as this is it works so well with oysters because you've got that minerality of the of the sea, of the ocean mm -hmm. there, and you can smell that in the wine as well. Now is this um, very different than the German version of a Riesling? It, yeah, it is, because generally German ones are a little bit sweeter, okay. right? But not always. Um, so this is, yeah, it's got that 
great acidity to it that's going to work so well with anything on the sushi platter too that's <laughs> the, got all of that garden flavors. <laughs> um, so this for me, super versatile, acidity, it's got the fruit and it just, it's delicious. Mm. This is available in stores or on your website? Yeah, it's the... available on, on our website and in private liquor stores. Excellent. Yes. Okay, oh, yeah. we've got one more great wine to try with Crystal Lee and our Spirits Up segment. We'll come back to Coast Restaurant in just a little while. I need to eat some of this food. Absolutely. Look at it. It's amazing. <laughs> this health and wellness segment is brought to you by Viva Nutraceuticals. So, Dr. Gorman, why is it that when the weather changes, people's joints start to feel more stiff, more achy, and why does that happen when we age? Well, um, as you know, we're moving into the colder season in Vancouver, especially the rainy season, and mm. a lot of people who have arthritis in their joints will start to complain about them being a little achier. A lot of this has to do with just colder weather making your muscles contract a bit, and so there's less motion in the joints. And it also has to do with fluid contraction. As the colder weather, the fluid contracts a little bit, so there's a little less lubrication in the joints and people will feel that a bit more. As they age as well. And as they age as well, that fluid actually, as we age, uh, becomes a little less and the joints become a little narrower. And so you get a sense of achiness and, and stiffness. Mm -hmm. And have you seen more cases? Is there a rise in joint-related injuries or people coming to see you for that uh, reason? Necessarily, I would say a rise in joint issues, but what we're finding as a, as a chiropractor in 20 years of business, over the last 10 years, I'm seeing a lot more joint restriction because of the sedentary postures and work uh, environments that we oh, are in. Okay. And so the texting, the text neck, um, and those sort of chronic <laughs> postures yeah, yeah. will stiffen your joints, and we don't go through a, a very full range of motion in our daily work. And so we're, I'm seeing a lot of postural issues. And postural issues, interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so what would you say the best treatment for that is? Uh, treatment simply is joint movement. So as a chiropractor, that's actually our focus of treatment is, is proper movement of the joints. And we uh, can see that in our elbows, which is a very simple joint and it's a big joint, but in the spine, um, it's a very complex uh, structure of joint movement and uh, more movements entailed in the movement of the spine. Um, so simply joint movement. Uh, the, and so that can just come in terms of activity through your daily life. So if you're sitting at a, in front of a computer and not moving, that's going to stiffen your joints in your spine because you're in a sedentary, compressive posture. Right. Someone said, of course, uh, sitting is now the new smoking. Yes, it's <laughs> the, new, the new epidemic yeah. is uh, sitting. Uh, Lynn and I always are looking for this. Can you talk about uh, preventative care? Is there supplements, things you can take? Uh, well, supplements, uh, so as we age, we just require more uh, uh, elements to repair our joints because mm -hmm. we're using them more and they um, start to require more repair, so we need more elements. So for the joint specifically, we do recommend like uh, calcium, a protein which is called glucosamine, and you can find those in common joint formulas. Uh, as we age, it's important to also include some antioxidants to sort of slow the wear and tear, so in vitamin C, um, and then, uh, or ginger, and then also an anti-inflammatory, which helps um, with just the inflammation of joints, and so devil's claw, um, curcumin, bromelain, those kind of things. So it's really good to have in the formula as well for healthy joints. Good. Great. This edition of the Health and Wellness segment has been brought to you by Viva Nutraceuticals. Insosia is an effective sleep aid that can help you wake up in the morning feeling well rested. The traditional Chinese herbal medicine is patented and has been used for centuries to help relieve insomnia due to heart blood deficiency. Insosia is made in Canada, formulated by doctors and manufactured by experts with more than 20 years of experience. For more information, go to VivaHealthSolutions.com. Hi, my name is Feng Shi, maitre d' at Coast Restaurant. Welcome to our city tonight. Welcome back to Coast Restaurant. We're here with uh, Crystal Lee for our last part of the Spirits Up Wine segment, and we've got one last wine to try. And a little birdie tells me that this actually is an award-winning wine oh. that we're about to try. It is. So today I brought our 2013 Time Meritage, mm. and this wine has won an award in every competition it's been entered in. Wow. And 
up until recently, all generally a gold medal, and has just won a platinum award at the Okanagan Wine Festival, the BC Wine Awards. So very wow. excited about very that. Very nice. Congrats. And can we talk about, uh, we don't have any food here on the table because mm -hmm. uh, this doesn't go with what we had. Uh, what would you <laughs> pair this with? You know what, this is a really versatile wine if you taste it. So it's a blend of Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Cabernet Franc. And that sounds like a big, bold wine. It does, yeah. And it is big, and it's got some tannin, and it's got some structure. But what I love about our Thyme Meritage is that it's got some great acidity, too. So right. it works really well. I mean, we're here at Coast, and so immediately you think seafood. But they also have an amazing steak program as well, so on a beef program. Uh, their sister winery, Black and Blue, carries this wine as well. So, oh, and great. that's where my mind goes yeah, definitely yeah, when I yeah. think about this wine because it's but because it's got that acidity it works with so many other things too so you've got it working well with game or pastas mm. or um, you know I like it even with pork dishes because mm. it's got some structure to it but it's a little more elegant and it's a little more subdued to it I can see a pork nice. tenderloin definitely yeah, with that right? yeah. and I know you but we all like burgers too I guess. yeah like to burger absolutely with yeah, right yeah. oh yeah. but how about chips Chip, well, Chip. potato chips goes well, the same. Crystal exactly. Lee, actually. <laughs> Two things about Crystal Lee, folks: bubbly and potato chips. She's always seen with at least one of those. So. Exactly. Mm, this hey, is listen. Delightful. Thanks for uh, bringing us to a place that we actually do hang out. Like this is great. Go. You're always turning us on, but we do enjoy this place uh, and great wines today. And we can't uh, wait to see what you got coming up before Christmas. Oh, we've got a lot of exciting things happening. Very nice. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> This segment of Spirits Up was brought to you by Time Winery and Evolved Cellars. Cheers. Cheers. One take. This is fantastic. <laughs>Okay, I'm a fan of the show. I'm standing with a woman that I think most people actually hate, but Michelle Morgan's <laughs> it's actually a fairly lovely person in real life, but as Hillary, boy, I gotta tell you, as an actress, you must, in all seriousness, love sinking your teeth into this oh, role. I love it. Yeah. I love it so much. And I, I was a huge fan of the show growing up as well, and some of my favorite characters were Sheila and Phyllis Ooh, Sheila. and oh. all the bad ones. Yeah, so yeah. it's amazing that I'm able to play such a villainous character, who, but who has a heart to her, you know? It's finding those levels, which I think are really important, which I think that people are taking to. Where I think so, yeah. And as an actress, you've got to find something uh, humanity-wise exactly, to cling on to, right? Yeah, because there's no such thing as a mean person. Like, yeah, people yeah. do mean things, but it's usually for for a certain reason. So it's finding those, those that drive. Yeah, and I really like, uh, we've talked to a number of the actors over the years like yourself, that I, I assumed that you would come on as like a six-week part, and it's just blossomed into a main character. Like, I've talked to a number of actors on the show that started out that way, mm -hmm. uh, and it's wonderful. I mean, how long have you been on the show? I've been on the show for just over four years. Mm -hmm. um, I did start as a contract character character because I'm from Toronto, Canada yeah. and they so in order for them to bring me in and get me the visa I had to be a contract character so they right. brought me to the US and then I started and I started on the show then but um but they never really tell you how long you're going to, because basically sure. the way the contract is, it's kind of like you're on the show, but at any time they can kind of renegotiate or look at it again. So I was always kind of like, oh, I just want Hillary to find a place. You yeah, know, I yeah. wanted to find her place in Genoa City and, and the fans have been amazing and they've taken to her so amazingly. So I've, I've been so lucky. I'm so blessed. And what I love too about your character and your storylines office, it, it's really embracing modern media too. I mean, Hillary's show is like online is streams, but everybody watches it. You're doing internet stuff. You're doing social media stuff and yeah, that's I could take some pointers from you <laughs> <laughs> well it's you know it's good to see you do that I think that's one of the things I've always loved about the YNR is that they really do they're, they're always ahead of stuff yes whether it's like you know illness or uh, dealing with addiction or even stuff like this yeah which I think is, is a beautiful thing because growing up because it's kind of a strange thing where where you're like oh I was a kid watching a soap mm -hmm. opera <laughs> but there, there was a there's a lot of amazing amazing lessons that you can learn in the show yeah yeah so I I have always watched I've always it's always been a show that's been close to my heart that's so I'm Great. Oh, I that's so wonderful. To be a part of it now. Well, I know you shoot about a month in advance. We were just talking to Brighton. I'm really hoping you guys end up back together again. I know you can't say anything, but hopefully we'll <laughs> see you there. No, <laughs> I think you two belong together. That's just my opinion. Anyway, thanks very much, Michelle. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it seems like for the last seven years, I can't go through a July without talking to you, Christian, about this wonderful, like wonderful bad Benny. Oh, no, it's a good, good, up. a good bad Benny. Uh, you're here every year. You give me your time to MC. And I was saying to Kate earlier that, that you know, it's great that you come and meet the, the, the fans, the fans meet you, but there's such a great uh, charity element to this, too. And I know you do a lot of these in Canada. Uh, what's it mean to come here and meet the fans today? 
in a very real sense, these people gave me my career. So, I mean, it's not exactly, I'm not without obligation, but it's never an obligation. I mean, you see the, the, the people behind us right here. They're adorable. There's a woman, Olga, who's 97 years old, has watched the show. She got up, got up. I can't do that on a good day sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And come to the, a big smile on her face and comes to the meet. Very and plans nice. on coming on a 98th year. I mean, they've only been gracious and giving. And like I said, in a real sense, we don't, you're not an artist. The art, your, your art is what you you approach it with, your right, passion. Right. But to complete the circuit, you need somebody out there who has eyes on you. Yeah, yeah. And these are the people. These are the people it's who make, make our professions. You, you're in the yeah, same yeah. thing where without the viewer, <laughs> you don't have any money. You and I are digging ditches. And you do, that's right. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. out, you know, digging ditches. Yeah. And so I can't be anything but appreciative. And also, when you tie this in with these people come in and pony up money, and there's nobody here that's rich. No, you're right. You know I what I mean? There's really nobody, and, they, and again, all of us mean well, but when you walk the walk, it's so much more interesting. It is. Well, I'm here at the GX, the gift exchange building in Vancouver, and I'm here to visit Loretta Voth, owner of Cahoya Rings. Come with me. So why just rings? Well, the short answer is that the rings chose me. I fell in love with the product and I wanted to pass that on to consumers. Hmm. So your specialty is meditation rings. Can you describe to the viewers what that means? Well, med meditation rings have spinners on the outside of the shaft of the ring. And by spinning the ring, it uh, brings you to the present moment and helps you feel relaxed and calm. So, it's interesting that um, there's a lot of stories behind your rings. Can you, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, when I first bought the business, I already had two other businesses and was wondering why I had bought this business and found out quite quickly into owning it that the rings had stories to tell. So I had a, an online customer that's part of our business, online sell, sold it to a woman in the States and she took the ring to Thailand where she was working in an orphanage and a little girl spun the ring and spoke for the first time by wow. spinning the ring. Well, that's pretty impactful, so that obviously made a huge impression on you. Yes. And so I know there's also a very charitable aspect. I'm not sure if that's the correct way of saying it. There, you deal only with fair trade, um, yes. buying directly from communities that really, really need that kind of business. Um, describe that. Yes, we, we buy from 18 different craftspeople in India. And because we're taking product out of India, I was very committed to giving back to India. So we help a woman every year learn a trade of sewing so that she can be self-sustaining. Well, that's wonderful. What a great business. Thank you for sharing. My pleasure. Well, that was super exciting here on the red carpet. Well, the purple carpet here at Rogers Arena for the David Foster Foundation Gala. Unbelievable celebrities, and we got to talk to a bunch of them. Watch this. Sure, hi, how are you? Hi, Good thank you. you, local Vancouver show. We are so happy to have you guys here. Well, we're glad to be here. What does the foundation mean to you? Well, listen, you know, David is really devoted to this. He's been doing this for 30 years now, and this is a passion for him. I mean, this is not something he has to do, and uh, we support David in everything that he does, and we've been friends with him for a long, long time. Uh, we've been in his home many times. He's been in our home. We know all of his family members, uh, and so we know this is a real deal for him, so it's an honor to be here and be part of it. Our son performed last night at the gala event, and Wonderful. so we're we're looking forward to tonight and hoping to raise more and more money. Hello. Hi, it's our city tonight. We're so thrilled to have you here. Why, thank, thank you. you. I've, I've been coming in since I played the cave. Remember the cave? <laughs> no. No, it was before you were born. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Anybody old enough to remember the cave, you probably got another year to live. Oh, Jay, what does the foundation mean to you? What does it mean to me? Yes. 
Well I, well, I mean, David asked me to help out, and I, I know it's for a good cause, and it, that's what it means to me. I mean, you do a lot of these, you know? I mean, uh, and it's not hard. I mean, idiot celebrities just show up and sing a few songs and tell a few jokes. I mean, the real heroes here are the people that, you know, put up these drapes and get the insurance bond and make sure the traffic is moving. And, you know, idiot celebrities, whew, I'm exhausted, you know? So we get a little, probably more credit than we deserve. Right? Because of David and what he does, I kind of do, I've done what I've done. You know, we, we both sort of came into this space more or less around the same time in our lives and have been pioneers in helping each other figure out inventive ways to scale and make it sustainable. And 30 years, you know, you, you have to be here. Wow, thank you. And Steffi? Yeah, I mean, it's a real treat to be here tonight. I mean, we've, I've got to know him over many years as he was supporting Andre's foundation back in Vegas. And, uh, you know, just getting to know a little bit about him and, and what he cares for and being here to, to hopefully change more lives and, and better more lives is for us a, a big deal. You know, it's just a, um, obviously David being a local hero and, and it being at Rogers Arena in Vancouver and such a great cause. I mean, saving people's lives and, um, you know, so it's an opportunity for all of us to make a difference. So, you know, think about it. If you can register, do it today. Perfect. Are you going to go back to yoga? I honestly keep thinking about it and yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. So you're the MC this evening? I am one of the MCs. One of the MCs. Because uh, it's a big show. You need two people. That's great. Because if one faints, you have the other one as a backup. But we have a Canadian and a big, well, well I heard you on loan. To on loan to the United States. I love yes. it. I love it. So Next year, 20 years though on loan. I, I, are, you know what I mean? There's, is that... Is that okay? It's okay, I can okay. Still tell you're Canadian. You got your yeah. <laughs> I never it. forget I them. It. You are beautiful. And oh, very sweet. What does the foundation mean to you? The foundation means so much to me. When you think about the family uh, in a small town somewhere, suddenly finding out that their kiddo is sick, that family is going to do everything they can to make sure that child is cared for. Yeah. But then how do you take care of the rest of life, the bills, the car, the mortgage, the other kids that need to get back and forth to school? How do you pay for the flights to go see your little one? Mm -hmm. You want to be with them every second of the day. That's what this foundation is about. Even talking about it, I no, get the you're, goosebumps. You're, I can no, see the I'm, I'm telling you, this, you know, it's in those quiet moments that you want to know these people have support. And they do. And you're helping them. Well, I'm doing my small part. I can just get up on stage and talk. No. It's David that's doing the work. He's got all of these friends coming out to support and raise money. Well, he chooses wisely. He does. <laughs> Glad Thank to be you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> One word, David Foster. Uh, hope. Compassion. Joy. You're supposed to sing all that. Oh. Joy. Compassion. Whoa, that's a little dissonant. That was a, that was a jazz chord, ladies cool. and gentlemen. <laughs> Well, we're here in Yale Town at the Distillery Bar and Kitchen. Jim, I think we have another giveaway, don't we? We do. We're always giving stuff away. This time <laughs> we've got the complete franchise of the Transformer series oh. giveaway and the actually pretty good remake, 2006 remake, of the classic animated movie, Charlotte's Web. We get the live action one to give away. It also comes with the book. So if your kids have never seen it, this would be a great prize. And then if you've got older kids, they'll for sure want to see Transformers. So, <laughs> oh, Lita, how do people win these two great prizes? They can go to our Facebook Facebook page or Twitter and hashtag Charlotte's Web or hashtags Transformers. Yes, thanks to Paramount Pictures, Home Video, and Shin Communications for this great giveaway. Well, Jim, that wraps up another edition of Our City Tonight. We had a lot of fun. And don't forget to follow us on all our social media, Our City Tonight on Twitter, Instagram, as well as Facebook. That's right. We want to thank uh, Gino, the GM here, and the staff at Distillery Bar and Kitchen, one of our favorite places to come. Check it out in Yaletown, and we'll see you on the next edition of Our City Tonight. Cheers.